Okay, so we're in the midst of a unit on change in the United States, and one change we already know is the amount of respect that the U.S. was getting from other countries. Another related change was um, change in physical size of the United States. You can see on the slide here the outline of the original 13 states over on the right, which would be the east, um, and then the land added when America won the Revolutionary War in 1783. That's labeled Treaty of Paris on that map. You can also see that with on, within only 70 more years, like a lifetime or two, the physical size of the U.S. is going to more than double. That's a lot of change, and it happened during a time period when land equaled power. So gaining this land also continued to gain America power. Uh, growing our country physically and gaining land was cre related to this concept of manifest destiny. Manifest destiny means obvious fate. That's the literal translation there. Um, and this term was first used by John O'Sullivan in 1845, who said that it was America's manifest destiny to overspread and to possess the whole of the continent. Of course, parts of the continent were already claimed by the British, by the Spanish, later the Mexicans when they uh, win their independence from the Spanish, and by the Native Americans. So this presents a bit of a challenge, but not one that the U.S. can't overcome. So let's see how the United States uh, gained its land. So you'll remember this slide from the last video. Uh, gaining land necessarily means taking it from someone else, another country or native nation or whatnot. So it's always going to be both a foreign affair issue and uh, physical expansion. So that's why we're seeing this slide again. The Louisiana Purchase was the largest single land gain made during this time period of expansion, all because Napoleon needed some money. You remember this slide as well from our last video. Slaves were escaping into Florida, remember, and then Seminole Indians were invading into Georgia, and all of this caused conflict with the Spanish. So remember Andrew Jackson, uh, who you now know as well as a war hero from the War of 1812, is still in the military in 1818 or so, um, heads down and attacks Florida along the border there and Monroe makes his you know governor get out demand and we know Spain ends up selling Florida to the United States in 1819 and that settled the size of our country for a while on about 25 years until uh, James Polk comes along. He is our big expansionist president, and you're going to see that he is president during a number of the additional land gains that are made. Uh, the first which is Texas. There's a long story behind Texas. Um, in 1821, when Spain was still in control of all that land area that today we call Mexico and Texas, um, Spain gives America permission to start a colony there. And so some guys come over, uh, last name's Austin, Houston, big cities in Texas, right? Um, that same year, the, the, these Americans come over and start a colony, but Mexico also wins its independence from Spain. And so Mexico still allows the Americans to come, but under much stricter rules than the Spanish had originally put in place. Um, these were rules like saying that the Americans had to become Mexican citizens and they had to join the Catholic Church. Um, about 1830, there's about 25,000 Americans in Texas by this time. And um, they're starting to get upset, not only because of the rules, but because Mexico had ended slavery in 1829. And this is southern land that um, the Americans are using to farm, and they want their slaves. So the American Texans rebel against the Mexican government, and Santa Ana, the head of the Mexican government, decides to fight back. And so the battles are on. A couple of the biggest battles happen in uh, 1836. Uh, one is at the Alamo, where all the defending Americans were killed. Uh, but another was an American victory at San Jacinto. Um, the Texans captured Santa Ana, the leader, and he ordered all of his troops to give up and surrender in return for his release um, so the Americans didn't kill him. So in 1836, the Texans win independence from Mexico. Now, they do not immediately become Americans. They uh, win 
their own independence and they become a separate and unique country, just like the United States. Um, they were called the Lone Star Republic. Um, many Texans wanted to join the U.S., but not all the people in the United States wanted them. Um, as we're going to see as the year goes on, by 1845, slavery is really starting to heat up as an issue in America. And so there are a number of people who do not want to add another slave state to the country. Um, and there's also a fear that taking Texas in as part of America is going to lead to war with Mexico, who did not really fully accept the loss of Texas. Um, nevertheless, in the election of 1844, James Polk is uh, running on the platform of expansion, and he wins, and he encourages Congress to admit Texas to the United States. That happens in 1845. We gain that land. Um, but Polk has not is not stopping at Texas, right? He um, actually won election in 1844 on this slogan, 5440 or fight, meaning he was going to win a battle for land up in Oregon as well. Now, Oregon was land that Americans had been moving to for quite some time. Way back in 1804 to 1806, Lewis and Clark were sent out on an expedition. Uh, Thomas Jefferson sent them out to explore his new Louisiana Purchase, but they went further than just Louisiana all the way to the Pacific Ocean, and they found what came to be called as Oregon Country. Uh, originally, this was land claimed by Russia, uh, Spain, Britain, and the U.S. They all had it. However, in 1819, as part of the same treaty that gave the United States Florida, Spanish also gave up its claims to land in um, Oregon. Okay. Uh, Russia also retreated north of that 5440 line, and so it is... Um, Sorry, I got totally distracted there. We are um, oh, left with just Britain and the United States claiming this land. Now, by 1845, thousands of Americans are heading west to Oregon each year, um, but still, the U.S. is not looking to go to war with Britain a third time. So Polk ends up negotiating a treaty where the U.S. agree to split the land at the 49th parallel, and you can see that dotted line uh, just south of Vancouver drawn in the map there, and that's our, our modern-day boundary there today, right? All right. That's even that's not enough for Polk, though, because um, meanwhile, down in the south, Mexico is still quite angry that the U.S. has taken Texas in uh, and made it part of America. And the border, the, the, um, where the border is between Texas and Mexico is also in dispute. So in 1846, there's some U.S. soldiers patrolling along the disputed border, and Mexican soldiers fire on these U.S. soldiers. Well, that sets off the Mexican-American War, which is an officially declared war that the U.S. fights between 1846 and 1848 against the Mexicans. The war ends, we're going to explore it more in class, but it ends in 1848 with the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo, in which Mexico gives up not only its rights to Texas, which it had already been led into America, but also half of its other land, all of what is today our southwest of America. Um, in return, the U.S. pays $15 million, and they do promise to treat uh, the Mexicans living in these lands well and to protect them. So uh, after the Mexican-American War, the borders of the continental U.S. were almost the same as they are today, except because some conflict continued along the new U.S.-Mexico southern border there, um, and because railroads were coming onto the scene, which we're going to talk about in a couple of weeks, there was um, a desire for Americans to have a little bit more land south of where the mountains are to set lay down some railroad track. So in 1854, the U.S. agreed to pay Mexico $10 million for this small strip of land called the Gadsden Purchase, and um, that sets the boundaries of our modern-day continental United States. Now, while the U.S., British, and Mexico were busy fighting over all of this land, let's not forget the Native Americans. Um, if you look in that map on the left there, those are original Native claims before any contact with Europeans. You can see all of the land was theirs. Um, we remember, you know, they were pushed 
further east as Americans and a British really started settling along the Atlantic coast. Uh, we remember that during the War of 1812, the Native Americans sided with the British, and since that doesn't go so well for the British, the Native Americans are going to lose even more land. If you look at that middle picture there, uh, this is showing the results of the Indian Removal Act, which um, passed in 1830 and was carried out throughout the 1830s. Um, there's a number of places you can see with the green arrows where Native Americans are being shuttled further west, west of the Mississippi River this time. Um, the last set of maps shows land loss over time. The top map starts at 1784, so way back when America is just becoming a nation during the Articles of Confederation time still. The darker area is where we have Native American claims, um, all the way down through 1859 at the bottom. Um, in mid-1850s is when the Indian Reservation System was created, and Native Americans started being given small clumps of land. Um, and we know if I were, you know, to continue to show you maps that went past 1859, those areas would get smaller and smaller and smaller. Battles continuing throughout the 1800s. And it's even still an issue today. Um, there was an editorial in the Washington Post as recently as three months ago, uh, as claiming there's a, a Supreme Court case coming up, asking that land in Oklahoma be returned to Cherokee control. So um, this is not an issue that has gone away. And, and all of this comes back to, right, the idea of that manifest destiny that I started the slideshow out with, that it, it being America's obvious fate to control all of this land. In class, we'll be looking at some of the positives and negatives that came from this particular change, but the growth, the physical growth and expansion of um, America during the early 1800s is certainly one of the biggest changes that happened in this time period.